Hello everyone, I'm Dylan C with Project Game Changer, and today we're going to be learning how to code a two-player soccer game using Tinker. Some concepts that you will need to know before making this game are event blocks, control blocks, operators, how to create variables, and physics blocks. If you don't know how to use any of these, then I suggest that you go check out some of the earlier videos posted on this channel to make sure that you're caught up and prepared to code this game. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so I just created a new blank block coding project. The first thing we're going to do is select stage. We're going to click on this little monster icon, scroll down to sports, and then pick the soccer stage. Then we're going to go back to code, and we're going to delete this little monster. Alright, so first drag out the on start block, and then we're going to need to find this physics tab. Now if it doesn't show up for you, make sure to click on the plus, and then make sure that physics is enabled. So now that physics is enabled, we're going to click on the physics tab, and we're going to grab the set gravity to 0 by 10 block. Now we're going to change it to set gravity to 0 by 0, so that during the game, the players and the ball can move around freely. Oh, and by the way, in this part, we will just be coding the stage and the goal. So next, we're going to want to create some variables, nine to be exact. So to do this, we're going to scroll up and then click on the variables tab and then click create variable. So the variables will be blue scores, red scores, Turn, turns left, sudden death, question mark, GG question mark, which stands for good game question mark, red scores question mark, blue scores, mark and which person Great. now we're going to want to scroll down and grab the set blank to zero block we are going to want to grab one of these for each variable that we just created so we will be grabbing nine of these to be exact Now you want to click on this arrow and make sure that each variable corresponds to one of these set blank to zero blocks. So blue scores, red scores, etc. Now we're not going to need to change much, but <clears throat> for turns left, we're going to change that 0 to 20. This block corresponds to how many turns that each player has in the game. So we're going to want to set that 20 because we don't want the game to be too long or too short. We're also going to set turn to 1, as we want each of the colors turn to only last for 1. Next, we are going to start coding in the scoring system. So first, we're going to drag out a when I receive blank block. In that blank, we're going to fill in red goal. This is because when the red team scores, we want them to be awarded one point. After that, we're going to click on the variable tab and drag out the set blank to zero block. Then we're gonna click on this arrow and pick the red scores question mark variable. And we're gonna set, we are going to set that to one. Next, we are going to grab another set blank to zero block. 
and then instead of putting red scores in the blank, we are going to select turn, and we're going to set this to 1. We're going to grab a third set blank to 0 block, and we are going to select the turns left variable, and we're going to set this to negative 1. This is so after each team uses up their turn, the turns left counter goes down by 1 each time, until it eventually reaches 0. After that, scroll to, th scroll to the control section. After that, scroll to the control section and grab the wait block. We're going to change it to 5 seconds because I found that this just makes the game run more smoothly. Finally, we're going to grab another variable block, set blank to 0. And we're going to choose set red scores question mark as the variable and then to zero. And this makes sure that the scoreboard counter doesn't keep on going up by one. And after it gives that one, it just stays at zero. So now that we've done that, we need to do the same for the blue. So go over to event blocks again and pick the same when I receive blank. And then we're going to go to variable. And then we're going to grab three of the set blank to zero. Actually make it four so we don't have to go back. And then we're going to go to control and grab the weight block again. And put that in between the three set blank to zero block. And then also set that to 5. So in the first blank, we're going to type out blue goal. The first variable will be blue scores, since the other one is red scores. And then we will also set that to 1. Pick turn for the second one. Now we're going to set this to 3. This will be explained in later parts, but the blue team, they go on turns 1 and 2, while the red team goes on turns 3 and 4. So this makes sure that after, for example, if the red team scores, on the next turn it's going to be the blue team, so the red team can't just score over and over again. Alright, so for the third set blank to 0 block, we're going to pick turns left again, and set that to negative 1 as well, and then for the final one, pick the blue scores question mark variable. So this will be the final little bit of code in this stage part that has to do with the goals. So drag over one final when I receive blank block. And then we're going to scroll down and grab one stop physics block. Set that blank to goal. As when one team scores a goal, we want all the players to stop moving. So that's what the stop physics block will do. Stop physics blocks will do. Sorry. This is the final little bit of code for the stage portion. So we're almost done. Click event blocks again, and then drag out the on start block. So now we're gonna scroll over to control and we are going to grab the forever block. This block is going to assure that every little piece of code that we have in between will happen throughout the game until it ends. Now we're going to grab the if false then else and then this little plus block and we're going to put that in between this forever loop. So now we're going to go to the operators and we're going to grab this boolean block that has the equal sign. Now scroll over to variables. Grab the gg question mark. Put that in the first slot. And then put 1 in the next slot. And then we're going to go to the looks section. And we're going to grab this 
say hello and then it's got a little plus or minus there. So we're going to want to delete the hello and just have it say nothing. And then go back over to control and grab the wait one second block and we're going to set that to 0.1. Next we're going to click this plus button next to the else and grab another one of the uh, I believe it's called boolean block with the equal sign. This time we're going to grab the red scores question mark variable and we will also set that equal to 1. This is the same as the first little chunk that we did. Go down to looks grab the say hello and then go to control and grab the wait one second. Now this time we're going to replace hello with red scored. And the wait will also be 0 0.1. So this block of code right here tells uh, the code that if red scores then they should say red scored up in the top part of the screen and to set that equal to 1. Alright, so we're going to click that plus button again and we are going to do the same except for blue. So grab that same block and this time when we go to variables grab the blue scores question mark and we are also going to set that to 1. Same thing, go to looks, grab the say hello plus or minus or plus block and this time we're going to type blue scored. And then go to control and grab the wait one second block and put that to 0 0.1. Now once again we're going to click this plus button and grab another one of these green operator blocks. This time we're going to grab the false or false block. Put that right there. Grab two of the equals blocks, put that right there, and right there, and then we're going to scroll down to variables and grab two turns. So grab the turn variable, put one in the first slot, and then another right here, and we're going to set that equal to one and 2. So blue, blue's turn is on turn 1 and 2, so we're going to go back down to looks, grab the say hello block, and this time we're going to replace hello with blue's turn. Then like the other ones, grab the wait block, and set that to 0 0.1 seconds. Now we're going to click that plus sign again. And this one is going to be the same as the this chunk that we just coded, except for red. So go to operators, grab the false or false block, grab this equals boolean block, put it in the false, grab another one, place it in the other section, go back up to variables, Grab two turn variables. And then this time, since it's red, we're going to set it equal to three and four. Now, just like the blue, we want to say that's red's turn so that each player knows who's supposed to be going. So go back down to looks, grab the say hello block again. And this time, instead of typing blue's turn, we'll type red's turn. And finally grab the wait block again and set that equal to 0 0.1. Congratulations, you have finished coding the stage. Now for the final part of this tutorial, we are going to be coding the goals. So click the add actor button and then go to drawing tool. So the first, let's code the red goal first. So we're going to want to grab click this tool and we're gonna click the rectangular I guess it's a square drawing tool and just make a long rectangle 
You can make it however long you want, but I'm going to make mine about... Around 6 pixels in height. And then I counted using these little squares on the grid. Now we're gonna... Change the actor name to Red Goal. And then click Save, make sure it says Saving, and then we're gonna go back. We're gonna do the same for the blue goal. And then change the name to blue goal. So saving, and then click back. Now it's important that the name of these two actors that you just created match up with the uh, event that you wrote down in the when I received block. All right, so go to red goal, and then and then you're gonna grab an on start block. Scroll down to physics and grab set active false and set static true. This is going to make sure that the balls will not move around when either the ball or an actor hits them. And then we're going to do the same for the blue goal. and static and remember to set set the static to true right. the final step is moving the blue goal over into kind of the goal box area and make sure not to put it too close to off the screen or else the ball is not able to reach it and do the same with the red goal all right Congratulations, you have just finished coding the stage, and make sure to tune in to part 2 to learn how to code both the actors and the balls. <laughs>